do you realize that every single one of you has a built-in innate ability to detect nutrition that is right for your body? How's that even a thing? Does anybody even like grasp that concept that we could possibly do such a thing? I love food. I don't just love to eat food, like I love what food stands for. I love that it nourishes us. I love that it comes from the earth. I love that it is instinctual. That is, we can't survive without it, right? It creates community. It creates family. It creates socializing. There's so much about food that is amazing. And I know that my purpose in life has to do with food. And God, it's taken me a long time to figure out what that is. When I think about my childhood and growing up, like food was never really in the forefront, but it was always there. So I grew up in New Jersey, and everybody thinks about Jersey, but I grew up, it's the Garden State. It is literally called the Garden State. And I grew up in the Garden State. My dad and I would plant a garden every year. He was a farmer, that was his trade. So there was this thread of food always in my you know, in my lineage, and I never thought about it. We just put seeds in the ground, and it grew, and the dog would eat the carrots, and, you know, this was just part of what happened. We had a big mulberry tree. It was like the tree that we climbed, and my brother had his fort under it, right? Like, there was just food. It just happened, and I took it for granted. And I don't remember, like, culinary being a thing. I don't remember my mom being a good cook. My favorite thing that she made was meatloaf. Do y'all love meatloaf? <laughs> So it was a meat and taters family, and food really was just kind of what happened, and I didn't think about it. And when I think about as I went through college and I kind of grew in my history with food, it was never strong until late in life. So in college, you just want cheap food, right? So it was like ramen and frozen yogurt, and you just, you know, were able to kind of get by on $5 in a week, you're doing good, right? So food was just there. And then, as life got a little bit more complicated as I grew, and I had a friend who was diagnosed with cancer. And actually, even before she was diagnosed, she was the very first person to come to me with this idea of organic food, right? She was a warrior. She's my best friend in the world, and I love her so dearly, but she worries so much. <laughs> Right? So she came to me and she's talking to me about organic and how important it is that you eat organic. There's all these toxins that are going on and the government, like food is being manipulated and there's, there's all these things happening and we're all getting sick because of it. Yeah, yeah right, Andy. Like you're a little bit of a conspiracy, conspiracy theory person. Like uh, you're crazy. She reminds me of this all the time, by the way. <laughs> I had no idea, right? So further down the line, you know, I'm kind of going through this phase of life and I'm kind of like, you know, having kids and gaining weight and wanting to eat healthier and wanting to figure out what that meant to eat healthy. I remember the days when like fat free was a thing, right? Fat free. Can you imagine fat free? Now we're all keto, right? Now it's all about the fat, but it used to be fat free. And then it was sugar free, right? There was this idea that we could taste something sweet and not have any calories to go along with it. Do you realize that when you eat something sweet, it's supposed to be energy? And, but we have no calories here. There's no calories here. Like, I didn't think about it at the time. We thought it was brilliant, right? This whole idea of food science. Fast forward, you know, I, I did the whole waitress job. I had the job as a waitress while I was trying to get a real job, right? Get a real job, get a real job, get a real job. But I loved my waitressing job. I loved the interaction with food. I loved what the people were cooking, right? Get a real job, get a real job, get a real job. My first real job was working for a label company. I was an art major, so I was working for a um, chemical label company. So we were making labels for herbicides. Hated that job. Hated the job, hated everything about the job, but I was making money. I was successful. I had 
had a real job making money for herbicide companies. Holy cow, I think about that. I'm like, oh my god. The story of life, isn't it beautiful? The way life goes, the way you look back and you're like, wow, that was a really cool moment and I had no idea. So, fast forward, I suddenly realized because I got sick, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. This is fast forward um, after I had this job in this beautiful restaurant with beautiful food and I started to love food and I started to recognize that food itself when we eat this moment of consuming food, it is the only time that you experience all five of your senses at one time, right? It's like, wow, there's something to this. Then I decide, I'm gonna go to culinary school late in life, because I saw this chef. There was this chef in this restaurant that was just amazing, and he could produce that dish that you could visually enjoy and, and, and sensually, everything was sensual about what he did, right? So this food had built this great appreciation for me. So I went to culinary school late in life, and I went to the culinary school that was organic and sustainable and local. And right after that, I got sick. And I got sick with an autoimmune disease. And I was married at the time to a man who had access to all the best doctors, all the best doctors in Colorado, and none of them could help me. So I had to dive deep into food. I dove deep into my love of food, not just how it fed me, but how my body responded to it. <sighs> from there, I created a spice company, and from there, I went even further into this idea of this confusion of food and how we're so disconnected from food. We need to get back. We need to get back to that tool that we have built with, that sense of taste that is there to help us understand that the five flavors that we experience are actually giving us nutritional information. And no one is talking about it. And I want to start that conversation. So I hope you'll join me on this mission to care about food, to listen to your body, and to really recognize that you are the most powerful message. Your body is your most powerful message to finding what nutrition is right for you. Thank you.